When I was first exposed to uh, the situation in Africa, what I quickly learned is that 90% of the pastors there have no training. So they rely basically upon their traditional religions, which include witchcraft and ancestor worship, what they see on television, which is nothing but the health and wealth gospel. And since they don't know the authority of scripture, they look for authority, so they rely upon their dreams, visions, and revelations. When you take all that together, out comes African Christianity, which is a mixture of all of that. Some of the challenges of the church here in Africa, lack of biblical teaching, lack of biblical understanding, lack of even biblical application. And because of that shallowness of biblical understanding, some of these rank heresies have been able to come in and, and sweep across the landscape. And with that immaturity of believers and, and lack of scriptural knowledge, I mean, it's pretty much a place where everything goes. It's like a theological wild west. The primary purpose for item is that they want to train pastors in Africa and equip them so that they can be expositors of the word and they can be biblical leaders training up a, a new generation to reach that continent. In Africa, an average pastor that pastors a congregation does not have any theological training. But the materials and the training of Bible and theology that ITEM has been doing in the past five years in Africa has helped brought about a certain level of biblical qualification to the pastors who are working among churches. For the first 10 years that we were involved in training pastors in Africa, the focus and the emphasis was giving them a biblical and theological foundation. But when I began to realize that the church was not being brought to maturity, even though these pastors were getting a biblical and theological foundation, I realized they weren't changing the way they were doing ministry. So we were giving them information here, but we weren't teaching them how to take what they were learning and put it into their ministry. And that's when I decided we needed to add another emphasis. What actually has been missing in the training of pastors in Africa is the life application of the Word of God. They hear the Word, but they do less of it so that's the problem. That's, that's, the, that's what is missing in the training of a pastor in Africa. The Ephesians 4 church strategy that we are putting together comes right out of scripture, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16, where it says that God gave the church pastors to equip the saints, the saints do the work of the ministry. As they are doing the work of the ministry, the church is being built up. But beyond that, it also says they are coming to a unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. And this next phrase is key. It says, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature that belongs to the Son of God. And then I love verse 14 because it says, and we're no longer children tossed here and there by every wave of doctrine. This is exactly what we are dealing with on the continent of Africa. Pastors are not equipping the saints. The saints are not doing the work of the ministry. So we've now developed a second seminar. We call it the Item Conference on Ministry and Preaching. On half of the lectures, we're talking about ministry, what the church is supposed to be. We're defining the elements of an Ephesians 4 church, giving them a vision for that. Then the second half of the conference, we're talking about the pastor's role in an Ephesians 4 church. And we, like, we, we put that down into three E's. He is to be an example to the flock, an equipper of the flock, and an expositor of, of the scriptures. The E4 ministry is that it's not just the pastors that need to be the focal point, but the church itself. So you can have trained pastors, but if they don't re reproduce that into vibrant churches that are actually doing the things that the Lord has called us to do, then, then it, it's almost um, an abortion of the process. It's got to give birth to, to churches that, that actually have living, breathing people in them that begin to be trained and then do the work of the ministry in their communities. There needs to be mentoring from taking from the, the Bible and theology seminars and molding the men into expositors and, and molding them into Bible teachers of the church. The next level of pastoral training in Africa would be that intentionality towards practicality. 
many of the pastors now have the head knowledge. But the next level will be how do we put them in a group, a network group, or how do we help them to become intentional in putting into what they have learned into practice. So the level will be mentoring. How do we mentor them? How do we give them examples? How do we give them models? The lectures, conferences, and seminars on preaching is not enough to help these guys change the way they preach because they don't have models. They don't have examples. It's brand new to them. And that's why we've decided that a very important part of this is a mentoring program where we take them by the hand and over a period of time, help them become what they truly want to become, but on their own really don't have an opportunity to, to be that. They need help. Sometimes people preach what they feel, what they think, but not what the word says. So when I discovered that preaching biblical messages, expository preaching, you preach what comes from the heart of God, the real word of God. It blesses you, then after blessing you, you carry it to the congregation. I'm trying to build, trusting God to use my life to raise other people through expository preaching. I so love expository preaching. I so love it because it pins you down on the text. It makes you preach someone so that your conscience is free. The ministry and preaching seminar takes what I have learned from the theology seminar and takes me out on the field to try to apply what I have learned. So it helps me to bridge the gap between the theory and the practical part of it. In 10 countries, if we begin with 500 pastors in each of these countries attending the first seminar, that's 5,000. If even half of them come to the second seminar, that's 2,500. If 80% of those went into the mentoring program, we're talking about the potential of 2,000 pastors in one year spread across 10 countries becoming examples, equippers, and expositors. That is pretty exciting. Let me just describe what happens through programs like ITEM and the E4 ministry. You are investing in people who are already familiar with the culture, already honored in the culture, and what you're doing is you're investing by giving them really the one piece that they lack, and that is the biblical and theological training that enables them to take all of the strengths and skills they already have and use them to make a difference in that part of Africa. The, the result that you get from that small investment really in my mind is incredible. In Africa, there's a transference in people's minds from even the, the elder, the father, even the witch doctor. They are the, the male leader of, of the community. And when you have one that is the leader for the Lord in truth, guided by the power of the Spirit and is educated in the scriptures, they can guide people who want a leader. That it's part of their cultural makeup. With ministries like ITEM, uh, we can bring truth to people that would otherwise be greatly deceived into darkness. What I love to see is the Word of God being taught, seeing the Spirit of God take the Word of God and bring believers to maturity, to see God being glorified through the teaching of His Word. And this plan is going to bring that to reality in the lives of thousands, maybe millions of Africans.